of this exhibition is uh, Spindle Hall, and the title refers to spindle whorls, which are Coast Salish um, weaving implements that were used by my ancestors. Basically, they're in this shape right here, so circular, and then the spindle hole there in the center, this would be protruding from the spindle hole, and the surface of it would be convex, which would mean that it would be like this, it would slowly go like like that on the inside. It would be convex. So this would be the where the spindle hole would be, and then the shaft would go right through there. The shaft being just a long stake that could uh, go right through the spindle hole. And once the two were combined together, they'd be able to create a spindle whorl. So the spindle whorl would be spun like in a motion like that on um, Coast Salish Weaver's uh, lap. And that would uh, be used to spin and that would create uh, wool. And uh, for my ancestors, wool was a form of wealth and uh, wool was used to create weavings. And in Coast Salish society, um, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, weavings were a form of currency. So that was the main, one of the main forms of currency within Coast Salish societies that was used for trading with, between communities. communities. So um, spindle hole, the title of the exhibition has to do with um, a hole, of course. Uh, some of the circular designs in the exhibition are in the spirit of spindle whorls. So there's the frogs one at the end there, we over there, and then this one, and then these ones right here. They're all in the circular form and they're referring to spindle whorls. So the design, the circular design of it is alluding to spindle whorls. And the title spindle hole also refers to holism. So um, that's the reason why I have that, that play with the words where the word in the title, the word hole is inside the word Whole. So mm -hmm. that uh, refers to, of course, uh, obviously the spindle hole right there, but also a uh, temporally holistic perspective on Coast Salish uh, culture. So it's a uh, perspective of Coast Salish art from the past referring to Coast Salish spindle whorls, but also Coast Salish art from the present in which spindle whorls are largely depicted by contemporary Coast Salish artists and also um, future directions that Coast Salish art might go in in the 21st century. So um, that's where I have some of these uh, square designs, stars being one of them, and then this one, which is sort of a combination of um, circular and square design combined. So. What I'm doing with that is that my perspective on Coast Salish uh, design and Coast Salish culture is that spindle whorls are really important and iconic within Coast Salish culture. And I really value that and respect that and honor that through the creation of my uh, paintings here. But at the same time, I feel an obligation as a contemporary Coast Salish artist to reflect my culture as it is today. So that's one of the reasons why I think it's important to go beyond spindle whorls as um, Coast Salish design, in Coast Salish design. So that's one of the things that I'm doing with uh, this exhibition. So the spindle hole in the title and in the works, it also refers to something that's empty and that needs to be filled, a void that needs to be filled. So for Coast Salish people, Coast Salish people have lost a lot of culture due to colonialism and, and um, assimilation and cultural genocide. So one of the things that I'm referring to when I'm using that word whole is that the, the void that exists within Coast Salish culture that needs to be filled through cultural creativity. Um, one of the things that I was thinking about was uh, I grew up down in the U.S., I grew up down in Seattle, so my perspective is a bit more um, informed by that experience. And 
when I was down there, I remember that um, for black people, Malcolm X said that for whatever, whatever culture that they've lost, that they have to be culturally creative to create new culture that's been, for whatever's been lost for uh, black people in the U.S. And I also feel the same way for Coast Salish people, is that this hole needs to be filled with something. So that's one of the things that I'm referring to with the title, Spindle Hole. So that's basically an explanation of the overall exhibition, but I can go, I can go over each work and explain them individually. Redefining Coast Salish art. And the sea forms that are that would be normally in the center in the spindle world have gone beyond the center and are spinning out and they've become sea forms, what are called sea forms in Northwest Coast design. So with Coast Salish design, there's lots of um, what are called concentric circles. That's exemplified by the um, spindle hole right here where they have the exact same center. So those are concentric circles. And in the case of this one, it's eccentric circles where the circle has gone beyond the center and is floating inwards to create a C form. So that C form is going beyond the, the center and going beyond the spindle whorl. And simultaneously, this geometric form in the center <coughs> alludes to Coast Salish weavings um, where geometric design was incorporated into the weavings of Coast Salish design. Uh, this one right here, uh, Seeing Subtle Salish, is an allusion to uh, Wayne Suttles, who is an ethnographer on Coast Salish art and culture. So it is also in the form of a spindle whorl. But it's basically in the spirit of spindle worlds, which is something that I've continuously repeated throughout my artist statements, where it's in the spirit of spindle worlds because this isn't necessarily a spindle hole right there. And when I was designing this one, I was thinking about um, some of Wayne Suttles' ethnographic work on Coast Salish art and culture. And with this, I had what's called a four-way split U form. So that uh, design element where it's just basically a circle and then you have the four splits there that create four split U forms going this way, this way, this way, and this way. <coughs> that creates a four-way split U form and that isn't really common in Coast Salish design, that's more common in the Cholent art forms. So that's from the west coast of Vancouver Island, the Cholent people. And also uh, northern people said that four-way split U form. So within this design is keeping with the theme of redefining Coast Salish art, there is an, a suggestion of an eye. So you just have the suggestion of the eye right there going this way or that way, just reconnected with each other. And then very subtly, it's sort of a play on words. I'm using that uh, Wayne Suttles, like that, that's his, his actual name, Wayne Suttles. But in this design, I have subtle faces that are inside of there. And those represent Coast Salish artists redefining Coast Salish art and Coast Salish people. And that's something that I've, that's always really characteristic of my work is the subtlety and the simplicity of the work with the um, contemporary modern influence within the work. So I like to use this real level of subtlety where there's the black and then the charcoal color right there. And this one is titled C form. It's also a play on words. Um, it goes back to what I was talking about in that painting partially, but we have basically a really large split or a large C form right here in the um, charcoal color and then the black and then another C form going down this way and then inside of the circle there's a face in there that's creating another C form inside of there. So that's a face in there and that alludes to cultural change within the Coast Salish art going back to the um, new visions. And this one, Spindle Hole, 
I've uh, partially explained that this is a spindle whorl design. And within the design is, uh, you can see, there's a suggestion, abstract suggestion of a salmon right there. Just the eye right there, and then the top of the head, and then part of the mouth. And then um, an influence from contemporary Canadian visual culture. There was a logo that I saw, which was uh, um, it was a, a logo that had to do with um, aerobics, and this was the influence. All of this is completely Northwest Coast design. Is basically this trigon creates an arm outstretched, two arms, one arm right there, one arm right there, the lower end of the body, and then a head right there. So you basically have a, a oval head and then the arms outstretched like that. So this uh, spindle hole is basically a reflection on different senses of wealth. So spindle whorls were a means for creating wealth within Coast Salish culture. So that's a representation of wealth and resources. And also salmon for Coast Salish people was a source of wealth and in some cases still is. And people as a source of wealth as in creating intellectual wealth or cultural wealth. So there's the people going around in the spindle circle there. And then something that I always like to really reflect on is the circular form. So this circular form partially echoes the shape of a wheel. Um, that's something I like, to, I like to reflect on as a contemporary Coast Salish person because um, for Coast Salish people, I think it's really important that new senses of wealth are, are created for Coast Salish peoples. For one, because our cultures have changed so much but also because um, we're so inextricably intertwined with Western society and Canadian culture that new senses of wealth have to be created within Coast Salish society. So that's alluding to um, weavings, but it's also a reflection of Western culture. Um, when I was creating this design, I wanted to create various hues of black. So there's the black right here which is a really straightforward black inside of the eyes. And this is more of a umber type color, which is, from some perspective looks like black, but it's basically umber, sort of a brownish black type of color. And then inside of here is a charcoal, which is just very <coughs> subtly different from the eyes there, it's lighter. So that, these overall colors within the design, design represent uh, oil oil within Western society and oil is a means for creating wealth and creating commerce and, and uh, keeping the wheels turning within Western society. So it's a reflection on um, redefining wealth within Western society considering that Western society has reached a point where we pretty much hit peak oil and that's something that's really significant for Western society to, to really reconsider and basically reinvent the wheel. So that's what this design has to do with. And this one, this uh, painting right here, is titled Stars. And what you have here is a large star going right across this way. And it goes all the way up through the entire design. And it is split right down the center. And that split in the center represents Western linear time. So that's Western linear time there. And the star is encircled by these other stars, which are subtle here and here. And then the personified stars with the human, the human faces right there. So with this design, I was, uh, I read uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and I was thinking about that uh, novel when I was, I was painting it. I was thinking about uh, character in because the movie was one of my favorite, it's always been one of my favorite movies. And um, one of the characters in the beginning of the novel, is, his name is uh, Moon Watcher, and that's one of the man-apes that, that begins to use the bone 
as a weapon that eventually turns into a spaceship. And I, I always really appreciated that uh, change from having it go from being the bone to being a spaceship. And with this, I was basically alluding to that as a contemporary Coast Salish person is just taking something that is so very basic and then doing something different with it. So that's one of the things that I wanted to do with this, this painting was to create something different with Coast Salish design, something that was very contemporary but still strongly rooted in Coast Salish culture. Because I like to, when I create works, I like to create something that when you first look at it, basically you might just see two triangles when you look at it, and it's more than two triangles. Like my uh, friend here, Brian Hunt, who's standing there in the back, when he saw the design, he saw like two triangles. And I always like to create that effect where you have uh, something that looks like a very modern graphic work, and then you take a stronger look at it, and you can see the um, Coast Salish design elements in it. And these two triangles here, they allude, also allude to the geometric forms within Coast Salish art. So one of the things that I was articulating in my uh, artist statements was going beyond the spindle world through um, cultural productions that are, are beyond spindle worlds, and weavings were one of those things that were created in Coast Salish culture. Um, this painting here is titled Weave. And it's uh, weave. It's a, also a play on words where I like to create that uh, punning where there's uh, puns in the Western sense of the word, where there's a play on words, but also the visual punning. So with this, the visual punning is created where the circular, like this one's also in, in the spirit of spindle whorls. And basically, the visual pun in this design is that the two face, faces share the same mouth in the center. So this one is a reflection on weaving within Coast Salish society. And with weaving, the spindle whorl, which would be about, maybe about this size, um, was carved by Coast Salish men and given to Coast Salish women who created weavings. And men and women are re represented in this painting by the two faces sharing the same mouth. So I was partially reflecting on that as a contemporary Coast Salish person was the, um, the cultural cooperation between men and women in Coast Salish society to create uh, spindle worlds and weavings. But at the same time, I was also reflecting on some personal experiences in my life having to do with a, a, a relationship that I had that didn't really work out and um, cathartically dealing with my heart rate of that relationship. And um, so I'm reflecting on Coast Salish um, men from the past and then me being a Coast Salish man from the present, reflecting on, on uh, Coast Salish culture and the relationships between men and women. So um, more of that is in the artist statement there. Um, and then finally, there's this one right here. This one is titled uh, Humans, Frogs, Salmon, Hole. Hole is in part of the, the exhibition, but also part. The subtitle of the, the work is part. And I have the word part inside the word part. Um, basically, because these. Uh, Frogs, they're partial, like they're partially depicted, very abstract. So basically, you have the mouth right there, and the nostril, and then the eye right there. You just have that basic representation of the frog, and then there's another frog right here this way, another frog right here with the lip, and then the nostril, and then the eye. And the salmon are basically on the other side of the frogs. So this is visual funny again, where the mouth is shared in this, by the two different groups. So right here is the mouth of the salmon, right here at the top of the head of the salmon, and then there's the eye of the salmon. And the human is depicted right here with 
eyes that are slightly askew and cockeyed. So one human eye is facing that way, and another human eye is facing that way. So it's like the eyes are just swaying around and spinning around and dizzy. And then right here is the mouth of the human. So basically you have the mouth and you have the two eyes. And the mouth, the small mouth, has to do with um, human uh, voraciousness and consumption. So that's what this uh, work has to do with, is uh, how animals in the form of frogs and salmon sustain the circle of the earth, while humans, through their voraciousness, cause lots of cultural or environmental destruction through culture. So well, that's basically an explanation of the works within this exhibition. So I don't know if anybody has any questions or anything. Thank you, Lisa. Having, yeah. having enjoyed Lisa's work yes. for a very long time now, quite a long time, I'm always amazed. I can enjoy it visually, but when I hear what the concepts are, it just enriches it so much more. So thank you. Thank you, Lisa. If any questions that people have, I'm sure. Could I just ask, you mentioned the spindle. Yeah. And you said they would roll the, the actual circle on their lap, not, not the piece through it. So they're rolling the, the circular piece to, to get the motion to... Yeah, like we uh, moving it like that, moving the shaft so that the, the uh, spindle would spin around so that the ball could be spun right and gather right on the spindle shaft. Oh, okay. Yes. What kind of light do you use to... Uh, well, I use a combination of uh, natural daylight and one light in my apartment and then another light to really hit right onto the spot so I can really see it. But with this one, I was, in particular, I had to make sure that I watched the natural daylight and see it under natural daylight. It's just the, the subtlety of it required to be like, painting in natural daylight so that I could perceive the colors because certain points when I was painting a lot of the, this painting, uh, my eyes, like I, my eyes stopped blinking, so I, my eyes became bloodshot. <laughs> yeah, it's funny when we uh, we first when I first walked in and saw this, I saw exactly as you said. It's just a two triangles. Yeah. And then the uh, my eyes were completely adjusted. Now yeah. I can see everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, I mean, we just. Um,